So as I suspected, the rationale that the <clears throat> U.S. government was using for the assassination of Qasem Soleimani was based on a lie. This is from the Gray Zone. The title is, Iraqi PM reveals Soleimani was on peace mission when assassinated, <clears throat> exploiting Trump's lie of imminent attacks. Desperate, to, this is by uh, Max Blumenthal of the Gray Zone. Desperate to justify the U.S. drone assassination of Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo insisted that Washington had made an intelligence-based assessment that Soleimani was actively planning in the region to attack American interests before he was killed. President Donald Trump justified his fateful decision to kill the Iranian general in even more explicit language, declaring that Soleimani was planning imminent attacks on U.S. diplomatic facilities and personnel across the Middle East. Quote, we took action last night to stop war, Trump claimed. We did not take action to start a war which is just obviously insane on its face. <clears throat> um, let's see. Two days later, when Iraqi's PM Adil Abdul Mahdi addressed his country's parliament, Trump's justification for killing Soleimani was exposed as a cynical lie. <clears throat> this is really important. According to Abdul Mahdi, he had planned to meet Soleimani on the morning the general was killed to discuss a dip diplomatic rapprochement that Iraq was brokering between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Abdul Mahdi said that Trump personally thanked him for the efforts, even as he was planning the hit on Soleimani, thus creating the impression that the Iranian general is safe to travel to Baghdad. So that's even more... I mean, just how messed up and like, just, I mean, no respect for human life. Trump is, you know, giving the Iraqi PM the impression that it's safe for, you know, Soleimani to travel there all the while, while the Trump administration was planning, you know, to assassinate him. <clears throat> So this is from more from the Iraqi PM quote, but at the same time, American helicopters and drones are flying without the approval of Iraq and we freeze the request of bringing more soldiers to U.S. embassies and bases. The Iraqi PM said, I was supposed to meet Soleimani at the, mor at the morning the day he was killed. He came to deliver a message to me from Iran, responding to the message we delivered from Saudi to Iran, the Iraqi PM said. So this obviously is a direct contradiction of the lies that um, the Trump administration and the Trump State Department have been, um, you know, both parodying, saying that, you know, the U.S. was at an imminent threat of being attacked by, you know, these uh, plans that Soleimani was orchestrating, but actually Soleimani was in Iraq to help facilitate peace in the freaking Middle East <laughs> and to, you know, de-escalate tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia, something that's super important. And then, so it's kind of interesting that Blumenthal brings up the, how during the Obama administration, they assassinated Mullah Akhtar Mohammed Mansour, Taliban leader who is eager to negotiate a peaceful end to the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan which ended up empowering hardline figures in the Taliban, and, you know, violence escalated as a result. <clears throat> and again, yesterday, the Iraqi parliament voted to expel all U.S. troops. And then Trump, with his belligerent um, bell bellicoseness, exemplified again on Twitter, you know, saying that he's going to if Iran retaliates, which why wouldn't they? This is huge, hugely escalating on the part of the U.S. Then they will, um, then Trump will attack their cultural heritage sites, a war crime under U.N. law. Let's see. Yeah, and then he brings it back to <clears throat> the lies that were used to justify the Iraq war and Condoleezza Rice's we don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. 
this time it killed, yeah, so in reference to now, this time it killed the second most important Iranian official to prevent a killing spree that was not on the way, and the Trump, Trump administration officials knew they were lying. And then he's um, reporting that Pompeo actually pitched assassinating Soleimani to Trump several months ago, well before any attacks were imminent. <clears throat> Additionally, too, I saw this in another source. This is just um, another article reporting on this. And in the wake of the general's killing, a U.S. official revealed to the New York Times that the NSA inter had intercepted communications in the United States. Had, okay. Between Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Khamenei? How do you say his name? Right. And General Soleimani, showing that the Ayatollah had not yet approved any plans by the general for an attack. Boom. <clears throat> and then he was just pointing out how the mainstream media, this is a CNN reporter, has just been parroting whatever the Trump administration has been uh, telling them. Um, so yeah, not surprising, but you know, let's see what kind of pushback, if it's even to what extent this, you know, reporting gets covered by the mainstream media, but this is huge. We know like right away the justification for Sul Suleimani's killing was, was a lie. And I said it in a previous video and now it's coming out, you know, he was in Iraq to help negotiate peace in the Middle East, help to ease tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia, and wasn't there to, you know, start some type of imminent attack against, you know, the Americans or American presence in the region. So Trump was lying, uh, you know, Pence was lying, Pompeo's lying, everybody else out there from the Trump White House has been lying about the um, you know, justification for killing Suleimani. Peace.